Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. <clears throat> God has burst the bonds of sorrow. Life has crushed the most horrible death. Our hearts shall swell with cries of gladness. Our silent tongues rejoice. The people of God are lifted up. Our eyes gaze to the heavens. Our spirits shall dwell in heaven's hope. God is always with us. God has revealed, God has the, revealed way to the way, the truth, and life. Sing, Sing with glad hearts before glory's God. throne. All right, time to stand up. Now that we've got our voices moving a little bit, and let's move it a little bit more with a song. Ask ye what great things I know. Hymn number 163 in the hymnals, or if you want to read it on the screens, it'll be on the screens too. Here we go. responsive prayer. Almighty God, the resurrected Christ, revealed himself to the, his gathered disciples by appearing in their midst and allowing them to see him as he truly is. So now, so now reveal, reveal our resurrected, resurrected son, son to us, us that, that we, we may also, also carry him, with promise, my Lord and my God. My God, empower Amen. us to daily Amen. share Amen. our grace love and peace with others through jesus christ our lord we pray amen amen glory be to god the father glory be to god the son glory Be seated and good morning everyone 
Well, you can say good morning back. I heard a couple of voices. That's all right. Well, happy Sunday after Easter. We are a little bit sparse in house today. We want to welcome everybody that's here and everybody that's with us online to the First United Methodist Church of Orange. And we are so glad you're here. We have an amazing car show going on right outside our door. So after service, run out there and take a look at all those wonderful vehicles. But we are gonna have a wonderful service for you here too. We have a few things to kind of cover. Uh, first thing, let me say if you haven't seen it yet, on your bulletin is a brochure for islands. And it looks like this Tuesday, is that right? This Tuesday, April 18th, from four o'clock to close, we have a special um, deal with islands. And if you go in and show them the coupon, then we get some money back for our preschool. Is that awesome or what? That is awesome. And there's two of them there, so you can take one, tear it in half and give it to somebody else, right? So we hope that you can all do that. Um, we hope that you have had a wonderful and a blessed week, and we know that this service will be a blessing to you. Today, uh, Pastor Bill is taking a well-deserved rest, and um, so we have a guest preacher with us today. Yay! And I know you guys know him. Some of you know him, because, or her, excuse me. And um, Jennifer uh, Weyenberg, right? And... She is a board certified chaplain serving at Providence St. Jude Medical Center uh, in Fullerton. And so she's actually a chaplain. Wow, what a great job. And she um, got her master's in divinity from Claremont a School of Theology. When she's not at the hospital, she's enjoying gardening, reading, crafting, and music. She is married to her husband, Clark, and uh, they have four grown children and a canine BFF named Trudy. So we're gonna get a chance later on to, uh, to hear from her. We're so excited that you're here today. Thank you for coming, thank you, thank you. Okay, without any further uh, ado, let's get our hearts and our minds ready by singing our scripture song, Thy Word is a Lamp unto Our Feet. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The responsive psalm this morning is Psalm 16 verses five through 11. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. The Lord is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also dwells secure. For you do not give me up to the shoal and let my godly one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The gospel lesson is taken from John 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening of that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. 
As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of many, they are forgiven. They are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I shall not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do you not doubt but believe? Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, I have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe and that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through, be, through believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. To God. Well, you guys are going to be, last Sunday we had a fabulous, fabulous choir up here. We had brass, we had everything going on, and this week they're all sick. So um, quite literally, all but about three of them are sick. So this week you get me. <clears throat> but it doesn't mean anything because we are going to sing this together, this next song. We're going to, <clears throat> as he tries to clear his throat, we're going to do uh, the song, He Lives. The refrain is gonna come up here, and what I'd love to have you do is you sing with me on He Lives, yes? So I'll go, He lives, and you go, He lives, Christ Jesus, and then I'll go, He lives, He lives, and then you'll sing the chorus with me. I think, Sam, are the words up there? All right, they will be. So I'll do the verse, it's your job to help me with the chorus. Is that okay? I hope so, because that's what we're doing. And if you're at home, sing along. You know, just have a good time. Stand up, get out of bed, get some coffee, do something, make yourself awake, and let's get going. Did it, Ken. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever folks may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just in time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, he lives, Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. Day of his approaching will come at last. He lives, he lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me and sat there away. He lives, he lives, he lives. 
gifts salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian. Lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek him, the help of all who find, none other than his loving, so good and kind. Sing it out. He lives, he lives, he lives, he lives, Judge lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow ways. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Good job, you guys. Good job. And now we get a chance. I got a chance earlier to talk with Jen and an amazing, wonderful person. You are going to um, enjoy listening to her speak and give you a few words of wisdom and understanding. And I know the Davises out here are even connected somehow. So she'll <laughs> explain that I'm sure during the time. So thank you so much. Thanks for being with us. Thank you everyone for the welcome. Happy Easter. Will you say a prayer with me? Gracious, loving God, may these words be inspired and blessed by you. May the hearers of these words be filled with your spirit and your love, that they may take these words out into the world and use them for the good of your kingdom in this world. Amen. Frederick Buchner wrote many wonderful things, but in one of my favorites, Wishful Thinking, he writes, doubts are like ants in the pants of faith. He shares that there are two principal kinds of doubts, one of the head and the other of the stomach. The doubt he speaks of that we understand most commonly is doubt of the head what we know but aren't sure of. Can I really do that project? Should I apply for that job? I know of many performers who would ask themselves, why did I accept this opportunity? As they would prepare to take the stage feeling so much doubt in their ability to perform. There's one performer, I cannot unfortunately remember who it was, actually had a bucket, a towel, and a bottle of water backstage because they had problems right before they went out. Buchner goes on to suggest that stomach doubt is one that most of us will thankfully never experience. He suggests that it might be the doubt that Jesus felt when on the cross as he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? A last moment of total unfiltered humanity of Jesus the man as he stares into the abyss of nothing before the next moment. A moment of humanity. A moment of doubt. Today's usual focus is on Thomas the doubter. Poor Thomas. He has two big moments being named person in the whole of the Gospels, and they're both of him doubting. So who was Thomas? In the Apostles' book from the Captivating History series, the chapter on Thomas shares some ideas of who scholars and theologians believe Thomas to have been. Known as the twin, or Didymus, which is twin in Greek, 
In research, it turns out that his name was actually Judas Thomas. But for obvious reasons, the authors of the Gospels worked really hard to separate him from Judas Iscariot, the betrayer. So who was Judas Thomas, the twin? He was a carpenter, like Jesus. And it is possible and most likely that he and many of the other disciples knew one another prior to their discipleship with Jesus. Thomas was likely a practical thinker. In chapter 14, when Jesus shares about going before them to prepare the place for all of us, Thomas says with doubt, or concern at least, in verse 5, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? So, is it that Thomas is a great doubter? Or is it that he was an average man of the time who, in today's reading, is living in grief, having just watched his dear friend and teacher die a horrific death, and now just can't believe this news of hope. But isn't that all of us? Mary didn't know it was Jesus. Last week it was read that she doubted until he spoke her name and she recognized him from that name calling through their familiar, familiarity. And then she saw it was him. The other disciples were shown Jesus' hands, feet, and side. They were offered proof without even asking for it. Thomas states his desire for that same assurance boldly. Could that actually be a sign of deeper faith? Why is questioning something considered a bad thing? Now, Easter Day is done. The trumpets and harps have gone home. The lilies are beginning to fade a little bit. It's a week later. The euphoria is starting to let down and fatigue is kicking in from all the planning, the preparation, and the celebration. Things are starting to return to a bit of normal for us. But the text reminds us it's not done. In fact, it's just beginning. Then in that moment for the disciples, when things seem darkest, Jesus pops back in to say hi. I confess that up until I was a teenager, I understood that Jesus lived. He taught us great things. He was crucified. He laid in a tomb for three days, and then he rose. And I thought he rose and went straight to heaven. I kind of missed that time in between. So now as an adult and as a pastor, I seek this time to lean in to all of that glory that Easter season gives us. Because like Christmas, it's not one day. It's a season. Lent gave us the time to contemplate, maybe rest a little bit, as we prepare for this season of celebration. We have the big fanfare and glory moment on Easter Sunday because, of course, we now know death lost. But now, now we get to settle into this time of joy. This intense euphoria dies down, but the joy and the intense love, those feelings linger. But what happens when we have doubt in our faith, when the bad things that happen in the world, in our lives, we tend to doubt? We cry out for protection from God or for strength. In these moments, is God testing us? Or are we testing God? When those pesky experiences creep in, when people we love get hurt, are sick, 
or die. And we have to deal with our experience within those things. In the midst of this celebrating, that seems impossible. It feels overwhelming and almost antithetical to the message of Easter. But that was. That is what God calls us to do through this process. Jesus gives the disciples commands throughout his ministry. And in today's reading, in verse 21, they receive another one, a big one. Just as the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then Jesus breathed on them so they would receive the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but I want you to consider, have you ever experienced the Holy Spirit work within you? Strengthen you with knowledge, understanding, compassion, or love in a moment where you are certain after the fact there's no way You could have done or said what you did as effectively without some divine intervention. As it was said, my main ministry is serving as a hospital chaplain. I firmly believe that the Holy Spirit works with me every day. I end up in rooms I wasn't planning on. I share words that I know in my heart were guided by the Holy Spirit. And I can show up in the ways that I do because God let Easter be a season. God knew we would doubt as Mary Magdalene did first. Thomas wasn't alone in his doubt. The disciples all carried doubt. Hello, they're living in fear. The doors were locked. And then Jesus shows up. Jesus says her name. He shows himself to the disciples and then to Thomas. He shares his heart with them again, giving them the renewed sense of purpose and confidence in their faith. We read these stories and maybe think of the obvious within the situation. But we forget. We have the whole story. They were living out the chapters moment by moment. We have had millennia of years to read, to learn, study, and know how the story ends. In the Genesee Diary, theologian and Dutch priest Henry Nouwen recalled that Didymus, the name by which Thomas was known, means twin. And that maybe it wasn't so much that his mom had two babies, but through the fathers of the church, there had been comment that all of us are two people a doubting one, and a believing one. We need the support and love of our brothers and sisters to prevent our doubting person from becoming dominant and destroying our capacity for belief. Father Richard Rohr identifies this as our shadow self, not a bad side, but the side that does not always see all of the beauty and wholeness of who we are as people made in the divine image of God, of Easter people. Another thought. Jesus places his appearances to his disciples in an order that I believe was and still is important. First, Mary. A woman. By giving her first view, he upholds his teaching that women are equal. Mary was also an outcast. 
And with that close relationship they had, he needs only speak her name. And she knows. She receives her assurance, and so we receive it today. Second, the ten disciples in the room. Behind a locked door, feeling that deep grief of loss of their friend and fear of what is to be next for them. Jesus stands with them and allows them to see, to touch and feel, and know that he is there. He is flesh among them, and they are assured by his presence. Then he comes back, and Thomas is now with them. He too asks for the ability to confirm the evidence that has been shared with him. We commonly understand his doubt by the words Thomas says, and who wouldn't? And while it almost sounds like Jesus is frustrated with Thomas, I think it's more of a matter of him recognizing the depth of this situation for all of them. Therefore, he lovingly gives Thomas the assurance he gave the others. And so we have all of these accounts to offer us assurance. Thomas, after touching Jesus, says in verse 28, My Lord, my God. I wonder if his next exclamation wasn't, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Then because God, through Jesus, knowing the heart of humanity, being one that will need guidance, bolstering, and compassion, Jesus gives the disciples the last point of assurance and the tool to ministry in this moment, the breath of the Holy Spirit. I suggested earlier that when we have hard moments, God might be testing us, or conversely, we might be testing God. Is God really there? Are we really going to receive the strength we need? The answers are, no, we're not being tested. No, we're not testing God. Yes, God is there. And yes, we are really strong enough for whatever is before us through God. The gift of the Holy Spirit is the gift of assurance that keeps on giving because it is through that gift that we, tied with that verse 21 for us to go and do, we get to carry the understanding that Jesus Christ was and is Lord of all. We get to go out and live into this beautiful, sustaining, strengthening, empowering, compassion-driven force that is God's love pouring down into each of us and through each of us and to all whom we encounter when we allow that love to flow. When we let our hearts open to the assurance, we get to feel that strength, and then we get to share it. Bad things will happen in life. We live in an imperfect world. But through Christ's death, through his resurrection, through God's gift of the Holy Spirit within each of us, we can know that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Oh, I think we can be better. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. At this time, I would like to invite the sharing of joys and concerns.
No, we're skipping joys and concerns. There weren't any joys and concerns. Oh, joy, the concern we have is for our um, all of our, our sick people, choir. all of our yes. folks that are not feeling well. And um, I know that um, Mark Liesma is recovering still from gallbladder surgery. Okay. And he should be back with us next week, along with the choir. So for all of those who are feeling under the weather, all of those who are in recovery and restoration of health, for Pastor Bill as he travels, traveling mercies for him. Let us now join together in hymn number 2086 from the faith we sing, Open Our Eyes, Lord. The words will be on the screen. prayer. Gracious, loving God, for those who cannot be with us today due to illness, we ask that you would pour out your healing upon them, restore their bodies that they may be able to come back and be in fellowship again. Father, we ask for prayers for Pastor Bill as he is taking time off for rest and renewal. Lord, we ask that you would be with all of our sibling churches, but this week we especially pray for the church, Christ Church by the Sea in Newport, and Reverend, or Reverend Pastor Paul Capitz, as they suffered some vandalism this last week. Father, we ask that you would guide the leadership of our nation, our county, our state, and the leadership of all the world, that they may be guided by your love and your compassion as they work to make our world the best and safest it could be. Father, we ask that you would bless this congregation, that you would pour out your strength and your love upon its ministry. As we all do the work of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, Our Father who, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is, is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Gracious God, we present to you these gifts and offer you our time and our talents. We ask that you would bless these gifts, that they may be used in this world to help spread your love and to bring your kingdom here on earth. Amen. Amen. And as we all remain standing, we're going to sing loud. There's a, not a lot of us in the room right now, but I need you to be loud. And we're going to sing, Easter people, raise your voices. Soon, very soon, <laughs> we will sing, Easter people, raise your voices. Forgot your book. We hope you have a wonderful week. Here we go. And now as the people of Christ, as Easter people, and as humans, take your love and assurance and let it wash away the doubt. May you carry God's love with you today, now, and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 